I was reading about virtual reality on the TED Talks, and Susie was talking in the BC before Computer Cyber Age, and he was saying that virtual reality is rather like having a whole other dimension of creativity. And he invented a movie for the UN where they're showing what it's like in Israel for the kid to say what her life is like, and you look all around and see all around. And I think virtual reality may be no more improvement than stereo over mono for a sound, or even just like color TV, you get used to it, it's not really that amazing. So I started to think, you know, one problem with virtual reality is you have to move your head around to see it. So I think they ought to have it where you're also kind of using your eyes to control where you see, you simply move your eye around. And it's like a kaleidoscope. One thing I noticed about the screensaver when we would have Windows XP, it was I thought Windows XP was really pretty horrible because they had a slow connection, you know, all those dumb connections. And in the screensaver, you see this, the tubes, the 3D tubes, and I, I thought the screensavers were really horrible because they're so habit-forming and they hurt your eyes and stuff. So I think our eyes need a rest, and I, that's why one reason I don't think virtual reality is going to be as big as people might even think. People's eyes are so tired from the other use of their computers. It's sort of like the bottleneck or the brass ring of using computers. So the idea of using our eyes only to find virtual reality, I think is not necessarily the only way we could do it. I thought if you look up to the ceiling and you see the kaleidoscope, and it changes everywhere you look. It's, it's like patterns from your eyes. Would that be any better? I wouldn't think so. No better, probably like worse even than the 3D screensaver. And I thought, well, what other ways could we do this? So I thought of using sound like with your brain waves. You put on the headphones, and it senses your brain waves. And then by finding those changes, it decides what sound to send to your brain to modulate those brain waves and improve your thought of that in a loop. Like when you go to sleep, you actually are going from complex to simple or simple to complex. And every time you get a stimulus, you spiral down more. You get another stimulus, you spiral down more. So this is what so much of life is like about loops, like they're finding about OCD, obsessive compulsive. They found the loop area in the brain that says stop the loop, and they can stop the OCD. So if we think about this, we would say, well, you could have the audio, and you're using it for going to sleep. You put it on the sleep hat, and it's got foam on one side or whatever for your cushion. Sort of a vanilla wafer, like you're saying about those sleep phones you get from Amazon. It's like thirty dollars, so just make your own as much more saving. So if you have this like phones and you put them on and you can then modulate your brain waves. And I was thinking another method of doing this would be to use a brainwave sensor that also sends back brain waves into your brain for even more efficient modulation of your thoughts. You use it to build up your thought of any type. Every time you think the thought it automatically improves it as much as it can. Like for example about fitness boost, or for creativity, or for dreams, or for sleep, or for just feeling good in general, or for just like studying for an exam, you can improve all those types of brainwaves because they're taking the mice and they're actually changing their brainwaves by recording the brainwaves and they're learning the maze, and they play them back and the mice relearn the maze after having been given a chemical to forget. So actually they can play back those memories and change them and relearn. This might be useful for like rehabilitation and many other uses. Like if the mouse is a cheese of holly, it will sit in too much of the squeeze cheese.